Are you looking for an easy tool to engage your Zoom meeting participants? If so, have you tried Zoom's built-in polling feature? Because if you haven't, you might be missing out on an interactive tool that is both easy to use, but it also engages the entire group at the same time. So today I'm going to be sharing about how you can use polls in your Zoom meetings. So in today's video, I am going to talk about what the benefits are and why you might wanna start incorporating polls into your meetings. I'll also share when you should put the polls into your meetings. I'll also give you a walkthrough and show you how do you set them up in the back and how do you launch them as the host. And finally, stick around, I'll share two tips that I really think benefit you when it comes to using polls. If we have not met before, my name is Kat and I help people to create professional and engaging online presentations. Before we dive into the meat of this video, I do want to share that there are two limitations. So one is that the Zoom polls are really only for a licensed account or a paid account. If you have a free Zoom account where you can do the 40 minute or less with fewer people, well, then you are not going to be able to do the Zoom polling feature. So you will first want to make sure that you have a paid account. The second thing is that you can only run these in the main room. So you cannot launch a poll when everyone is divided into breakout rooms. Now, that, since we've got that settled, let's get into why you would wanna use it. And there are a few really great reasons why you wanna start using polls. So first, as I said, it engages the entire group, meaning every single person on the call takes part in the poll. Often we have more reserved or quiet people who are taking part in a meeting. Maybe they don't wanna speak up or even turn on their camera, but they can take part in a poll and you can get valuable feedback from them. The second thing is you can learn about the group. This really helps from a teacher standpoint. Maybe if I'm teaching about something, I wanna know how much people already know about this subject. How familiar are you? So for example, if we were in a meeting right now, I would wanna know. What's your experience with Zoom polls? Have you used one? Have you set one up? I could ask that really easily with a poll and get everyone's answer right away. But learning from the group also includes the group learning about each other. When you answer a question in a poll, everyone in the room gets to see the distribution. So maybe everyone knows how familiar the group is, or if you're doing more of an icebreaker or getting to know you, you can learn more about the group with that polling feature. And you do have the setting, I'll show you in a moment. You can set it to anonymous or not so that people don't have to know how people answer. The other thing is it sets expectations. Now, I mean this in a few ways. First of all, it sets the expectation that this is going to be an interactive and engaging session. Meaning, don't multitask, don't be looking at something else. You can say there are going to be some polls in today's meeting. It means the expectation is that you will answer. I'm going to launch a poll. I'm gonna know how many people have answered. So if there are three people we're waiting for your reply, we know who is participating and who isn't. Once people realize that there is a two-way communication, usually it makes them perk up a little bit more and they might be less likely to wander off when you're asking for their feedback. Now, the other way that this sets the stage for expectations is you can actually design a question that is specifically tailored to give your group some insight into what they're going to be learning. And I actually have an example of that that I will show you during the demonstration of how you can set expectations for what they are going to learn and what is gonna be covered in the meeting. So you can think about what are the learning objectives? What do I want people to know by the end of this meeting? And it also helps people to apply their learning. So if you just taught them something, you can set up a poll question that gets them to think about what next? Now that I know this, how am I gonna use this information? So it actually really helps them as the student to process what it is that they are learning. And again, I'll show you an example of just that. Now, those are many of the reasons why you would want to use it. It really is a great tool for you as the host, but also for the group. Now, when you should use it. I think you would wanna scatter them throughout the meeting, but not, not do too many. But I really think a poll question works great at the very start of a meeting. And the reason I think that is because I'm a big believer that when you are engaging your audience in a meeting, you want easy, early, and clear. And so when I say this, I mean early on in the meeting, as in right away, it sets the tone, we are going to engage, we're going to interact. This is not just me talking at you for the next hour or however long it is. Easy, meaning 
all you have to do is pick an option. It's not complicated. You don't have anything really messy. People just click a button. It is easy. And then finally clear. It's not confusing. Sometimes we give instructions for an exercise or how someone's supposed to engage and the group's saying, how am I doing this? What are we supposed to do? When you launch a poll, it is very clear. All you have to do is answer the poll. So it is early, easy, and clear. And I think this is a really great example of how you should kick off any meeting where you're going to have engagement. And when it comes to the meetings, it depends on what you're using it for. If you want to have an icebreaker, obviously you want that at the start. But if you want to apply learning, that's usually going to be a little bit later. So that will help you decide when you actually plan and position the polls. So now let's set it up. You are actually going to sign in to your browser and you will go to your meetings. Now I set up a Zoom polls demo meeting. And when you're on the meeting page, this is after you've created it, you can click on the meeting and see the details. And when you go to the bottom, you will see polls. Now, typically there will be no polls, but I've added a few already in advance. So these are three different samples and I set these up on purpose to give you an idea of how you can use these polls based on what I shared with you. So getting to know the group, let's take a look at this question. So here is how familiar are you with Zoom polls? They get to pick one option, not at all. I've answered a Zoom poll, I've created a Zoom poll, or maybe I've created and answered a Zoom poll. If I launch this, I have a really good idea how much the group knows about Zoom polls. Let's take a look at the second example. This is around setting expectations, meaning I am giving this group an idea of what is to come. So this would be an idea for this type of le lesson. So what interests you most about today's session on Zoom polls? Are you most interested in learning how to set it up? Are you interested in having ideas for poll questions? Are you most interested in the tips for using polls? Or are you wanting to understand when you should use polls? So this is a way that by having each person read those four options and then make a decision, they're also getting information knowing what it is that they can expect from the meeting. Finally, here's an example of applying knowledge. So when it comes to applying knowledge, you what will be the primary reason for using a poll at your next meeting? Now I set this to multiple choice, meaning they can pick more than one reason. But what this question does is it forces people to think about what am I going to do with this information? So now I know more about polls and how they work, but what am I, why would I want to use one? Because not everyone is going to have the same reasons. So if I have my participants think of an upcoming meeting and then think, why would I want to use it? Then they can answer this question, but it's making them put it into practice and it takes the, so what, and turns it into a, now what, what do I do with this? Let's create a poll question. So you, once you've got a poll, you can actually add some more polls down at the bottom. We have an add button. So whenever you're adding a poll, you'll get this page come up. You can title it. So I gave those titles. You can just say poll one or two. You don't have to give it a fancy name, but let's just say for fun, we're going to do an icebreaker. And maybe I want this one to be anonymous so that people don't feel any threat of being outed by their, in front of their peers. So let's just say, how's your week going? This would be great if the team knows each other and they're comfortable with one another and they're open to sharing because sometimes we want to do a check-in, especially when we are engaging on a more virtual level. So let's just say, good so far, not so great. And maybe let's just say, dumpster fire. This is another way, when I say for fun, it's a way to check in genuinely to know how people are doing. It's also a way maybe to make people smile. So when we've got these options, you always need at least two options, but after that you have up to 10. You can also add another question, but you should know that if you add another question, they'll show up together. So you want to make sure that they're related or that you are planning to ask those questions at the same time. So maybe I could say, what are you looking forward to most on the weekend? Whatever you want to ask you, can, as long as they're related, that's a good time to put them together. So let's just save this question. Something went wrong, of course, <laughs> because I'm doing a demonstration. Well, we already have some polls added and this meeting is live, so maybe that's why. So let's go over to the actual Zoom meeting 
And now I've got myself as a host, which is the, on the right. And then we have myself as a guest on the left. Now I don't have the, the cameras on because it just gets very trippy. <laughs> so let's just pretend that there are people actually on this meeting, but you're looking at the host site, which means I have the ability to launch the poll because I am the host. Co-hosts can also launch the poll. So the poll pops up and I see this as a host and you'll see the question. And at the top, if you have more than one, you'll be able to toggle and decide which one you actually want to spend. So once you've done that, then you can launch it. Now, before I launch it, I'm actually going to pop over and we are going to go into my laptop, which is where I am signed in as a guest to this meeting. So I'm not the host here and let's see what happens when I launch the poll. So I've pressed launch. So now everyone on your meeting gets this little pop-up window and it has the title. So you might not want to title it something as what you are doing with people. This might be checking in. You could call it poll one, but the title does show up. So you should know that. And then I'm going to go over and answer it and say, you know what? I'm most excited about ideas for poll questions. And I'm going to submit that. And now if we go back to my screen as a host, I can see that one out of one participants have actually answered this poll. So I know that 100% of the people on this call have actually voted. And when I end the poll, I have the option to share results. So let's switch back to the guest and see what happens when I push share results. Now it says host is sharing poll results and you can see that 100% of the people on this call want ideas for poll questions. Now, if we go back to my host screen, I can just click stop sharing, so that will close, and I can just close that for now, go about my meeting until the next poll comes up. But that it's that easy, that's how you set it up. Now, you may have noticed there was a little edit. If you click this edit button, it will actually open the browser and take you back to that page for you to edit. And normally in a meeting you can edit, but something went wrong on my side. So, hey, <laughs> who knows? Always practice, always, always practice. All right, so that is a demonstration of how you actually set up and then launch the poll and you can see what it looks like on the other end for your participants. So now I wanna share a couple of tips when it comes to running the poll. So these are the top two things that I would recommend. So the first is don't go overboard. Really, these polls should be part of a larger engagement strategy. You want to use a variety of tools to keep people engaged. Just having polls and talking at people, not a great strategy. So just really, it depends on the length of your meeting. If it's a longer meeting, you might be able to get away with more, but be really intentional. Why are you asking them? And then figure out how you can space them so that people don't have poll fatigue because that can happen. My other tip is consider some humor if appropriate. So you saw an example where I threw in dumpster fire as a bit of a joke. Usually people don't expect to see that as an option, so it might make them laugh. Another example, if you have a high familiarity with the group, sometimes even poke fun at yourself. For example, I was running an Enneagram workshop with a team that I was pretty familiar with. And so I was able to put a, put a little joke in the start where I said, how familiar are you with the Enneagram? Not at all, a little bit, a lot, or cat won't shut up about it because that's just who I am. It's the reality. And so people don't expect that. Usually it'll make them laugh and it's a way to break the ice at the start. So I do suggest adding a little humor if it's appropriate. It really depends. You got to know your group. There are ways to incorporate it well, but if you're forcing it, then just let it go. Don't force it. Hopefully this gives you a really good idea of how you can use polls and maybe some ideas for how you can start to incorporate this interactive tool that does engage the entire group. And as always, if you found this useful, I really encourage you to like the video and subscribe to get more information on how you can make professional and engaging online presentations.